Hello and welcome to a new video about digital technology. Today we are going to talk about ADCs, huh? the first variant of ADC. The first variant we are going to talk about is the so-called RAND Compare ADC. How is this working? Well, basically on all ADCs we do have an input voltage. This is the voltage we want to somehow get into a number. So we have here an input voltage, which is here, UI. And this input voltage has a certain, a certain form. If this is D and we have a UI, this might look like this changing over time. All right. So this is UI, and I want to have. An output. I want to have a number reflecting the current value of this UI. This is the goal. So what we what we do is that we have a, a sawtooth generator. So we have somewhere. Throw it here. Sawtooth generator. What is this sawdust generator? Sawdust generator is producing a special form of voltage. It's producing a sawtooth, a sawtooth swing. Yeah. So we have somewhere a maximum value of this voltage. We have somewhere a minimum value of this voltage. And we do have a period. I hope I can manage to draw it periodically, more or less. And the signal of this sawtooth generator, yeah, I call it U sawtooth. <laughs> it's looking like that, that it goes straight up and then drops. Goes straight up. And then drops. This is a typical sawtooth waveform. Note it starts negative, yeah, going straight up to a maximum value, dropping immediately to the beginning value. This is exactly how this looks like. Okay, this is this is what the sawtooth generator is producing. Then we have to uh, Analog digital conver uh, sorry, two comparators. Two comparator. We have one comparator here. It has a minus and a plus input. Yeah? This is comparator one. What is a comparator? A comparator is comparing two voltages. If the plus input is higher than the low input, than the minus input, then the comparator output is one. Okay? So it's producing a digital signal whether the plus input is higher than the minus input. Okay? Comparator, uh, comparator one. And then we have a second comparator, comparator two. Also with minus and plus, comparator 2. Okay. And what are we comparing? In both cases we are comparing the signal of the sawtooth generator. But to what? Here this one, this one comparator compares this to ground. So comparator 2 is always switching to true here, zack, here, zack. Here, zack, here, zack, here, zack, here, zack. Because starting from here, going up, signal from comparator 2 is, is 1. 
Okay. And here we are going to compare to UI. And this means here, starting from here, going up, comparator one is is one. Huh? So actually, here with the two comparators, I have I am producing here two a window, a window, time window. I only have to somehow use an element to compare those two things. And what element is, is good? The element XOR. Okay, an XOR element. Because if this is one and this is not yet one, I want to have a signal. If both are one, the signal should be gone, should be gone again. If both are zero, there should be no signal. So actually, I'm using here an XOR element. So this is an XOR. I'm using this signal and this signal. So Y is only true during those time windows between the red and the, the orange point. Then this is this is true. Okay? This is already good because you see this time window is changing with the strength of UI. Yeah? If we have high UI, if we have relatively long time window, if we have low UI, we have relatively short time window. This is the signal huh? here. The signal Y. So Y is only true between those two. Huh? And then the only thing I have to do now is that I have an end element. Then I need an impulse generator. an impulse generator and I take this and only during those time windows the impulses from this generator this is producing I don't know 3 million swings or 3 megahertz or can be at watts or something like this typical swing element yeah, and only during the time window, this time window, at the output here, I have during this time window impulses. And the rest is always the same on all ADCs or almost all ADCs. I'm using a counter. Okay. Counter. And I'm counting these impulses. If I'm ready counting, I have a counting value, which is reflecting the time. And because it's reflecting the time, it's also reflecting the, the current value of UI. And this is what I want. I have a number reflecting the strength of UI. Okay? Because here I can count longer. I can count more impulses. If we have a look now at the impulses here, yeah, then we would count a lot of impulses. So we have high counter value, and here we are counting ready. Not that many impulses, and we have a low counter value. So high counter value reflecting high values of UI. Low counter values are reflecting low values of UI. Good. Yeah. The only thing which is not that nice is when to read it out. Yeah? So we don't only have a counter, we also have a memory. And the counter value is transferred into this memory. Once it stopped counting, it will be copied to the memory. Buff. And then this memory can be accessed anytime. The counter is free to run again. The last known value I have stored in my memory. And here we have my digital output. So here I have a digital 
while you're reflecting this. Yeah? Or some even have here a display already. Display. And we might also transfer this to the display from the memory. Mm -hmm. you can look into inside the memory. And so it's somehow decoupled. I don't see the counter counting, I only see the end value because this is what I'm interested in. Yeah? Because this is when that's it. That's it. Yeah? How to make such sawtooth generator? Well, we could use it, we could make it like this that we have here as impulse generator. Yeah? Then we have a counter. So here this is the impulse generator, here is a counter. And then I'm using a digital analog converter. So here are the impulses coming. Here we have a counter value, so we have a lot of signals, yeah, a lot of digits. Yeah? And from the DSC we have an output. And this output would look like that. That we have starting low and then go up in steps, in tiny steps, tiny steps, tiny steps. And look at that. And then I reset the counter. Book dropping to zero. Sawtooth generator. Okay. So this here. This here is the sawtooth generator. Yeah. And if I'm using the same impulses here, then you know then I can get rid of somehow inaccuracies of this impulse generator. This is a quartz or something like this, and it might swing with a slightly different different swinging period than my than my uh, prototype or something like that and if I'm using the same impulses here and here even small inaccuracies of the of the impulse frequency does not does not bother us huh? does not bother us at all huh? because it will be self compensating because then also the steepness of the of the ramp is different Ramp compare ADC. This is how this is working. Uh, what are the advantages? The advantages, it's rather straightforward, it's rather simple. And we do have always the same amount of time we need to transfer to get a new value. Okay? We, we need to get a new value and it's always the same time. Hmm? Only always after this time I'm sure to have a value so we're working cyclic cyclic yeah? sometimes this time is a little bit too long okay and so we are also working with other approaches than this so in DSC and on digital analog converter I've said uh, that's the approach and here we have more approaches so this is ramp compare method yeah? Next time, I we are going to talk about a dual slope ADC. This part, like I said, this part, this counter memory display part, this is almost the same. But before, we have a little bit different things. How this is working, I'm going to explain in next video. Next video, dual slope ADC. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.